Hey everyone, welcome back to our movie news. As you are watching this, I am in Portugal for a short holiday, and so I thought I should make a video that you guys can enjoy whilst I'm away. So I asked my followers and subscribers to tell me their most unpopular opinions about DC movies, and the answers that I got were fascinating. I think this is a really interesting video as it shows how diverse the DC fandom is in the way they perceive these movies, and actually some of these opinions I'm going to go through I really do agree with, but also there are some that I really disagree with. So let's go through them. Firstly, me ya 6503 says, didn't mind the 2017 Justice League movie, and I think this will definitely be an unpopular opinion. But I have to say, I actually agree. And I know this will be an unpopular opinion, but I think if Joss Whedon had directed Justice League from the start, and maybe the DCEU didn't start with a darker tone, then his Justice League film would have been really good. I love his two Avengers movies, and there were actually many elements of his cut of Justice League that I liked. The opening scene with Batman on the roof was incredible, and I mostly liked what they did with Superman. He was happier and more hopeful, but it was executed poorly, and it felt completely off from the story arc that Snyder was building with this version of Superman. And unfortunately, due to Jeff Johns, there were a lot of cringy lines and messy scenes, but with a writer of Whedon's choice, I think he could have made a really good Justice League film. But to go back to what we actually saw from him, it was an alright movie. Nowhere near the quality DC movies need to reach, but it wasn't awful, and I actually prefer it to some of the other DCEU movies released, so I'd give it about a 5 or a 5.5 five out of 10. So I agree, I didn't mind the 2017 Justice League movie. Okay, and now on to the next unpopular opinion. Gavin Michelli Art says, the original Suicide Squad is a more unique and interesting movie than the sequel. And wow, that is a bold take. Now, I personally don't particularly like either, but I think Gunn's movie was more unique and interesting than Warner Brothers' cut of Suicide Squad from 2016. I feel that Gunn's film felt more unique and interesting in the way it was directed. I absolutely loved the quick camera movements and I loved the story, and the visuals were cool for the most part. I just wasn't a fan of the humour, but I still would take it over the 2016 movie, which I feel was just a boring mess of a film. And I would say that is Warner Brothers' fault. Now, the next unpopular opinion I think is one of the most fascinating opinions in this video. RSL said, DC should have never attempted a shared universe. Man of Steel should have been a trilogy, as originally intended, and Wonder Woman should have gotten her own solo trilogy. And this is a really interesting one. I can definitely see where this person is coming from. The Dark Knight trilogy is seen as one of the best trilogies of all time, and in fact, DC has been at its strongest when making standalone movies. And if you look at the mess that the DCEU turned into, no matter what the original intentions were for the shared universe, and no matter what movies you may have liked in it, I actually think that Man of Steel should have been a Superman trilogy. Man of Steel is my favourite superhero movie, and to have seen two more films films that would have solely focused on Superman's story and development, I feel would have given us a far better story for Superman than what we actually got in the DCEU. Because no matter what the original plan was going to be, we never actually got it, and I think if they made it a Superman trilogy instead, we would have seen all three films. I think Snyder's Superman story is truly rewarding at the end of the story, but they stopped halfway, so it never got truly developed to its max. And also, the next two Justice League films wouldn't have just been focused on Superman. It would have been the whole Justice League, including Superman. So I still think a trilogy of Superman films would have been more beneficial for the character than what we actually got. And the same goes for Wonder Woman and DC in general. Moving on to the next unpopular opinion, Man Film 2 says, It's a mistake to start the DCU with a Superman film. Superman's franchise has been in decline for years. Man of Steel did worse than Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam per ROI. There's little buzz for Superman, and the marketing isn't helping. Superman will break even and hurt the DCU's chances. 
is, and I strongly disagree with this. I don't really think there is much evidence to argue this, and what he tries to use as evidence doesn't really have much context to it. Man of Steel was the beginning of the DCEU, and was a whole modernization of the character, and still made over $600 million. Wonder Woman was four movies in, and so DC had been building a loyal audience. Pretty much every DCEU movie was making more than the last. If Man of Steel had released a few movies into the universe, it probably also would have made more than it did in 2013. Ant-Man in 2015 made $200 million more than Captain America 1 in 2011, but most would say that they like Captain America 1 far more than Ant-Man 1. The reason why Ant-Man made more was because of when it was released and how much of a loyal audience Marvel had built. As for Aquaman, that was also released in 2018 when superheroes were at their most popular and the DCEU had been around for a while. And as for Shazam, yes it did better per ROI than Man of Steel, but it also had a fraction of the budget and only brought in half the box office of Man of Steel, whilst also releasing in the most popular time of superhero movies. Making less than $400 million on a superhero film in 2019 is a failure in terms of bringing the audience in. If you can't do that when superheroes are at their most popular, then there is something extremely wrong, and the fact that the the second one couldn't scratch $300 million shows that Shazam 1 was lucky to make the amount it did, and I liked the film. So Man of Steel did very well for when it was released, and comparing it to other DCEU movies without context paints a factually incorrect picture. The DCU starting with Superman is a great idea as he is your largest hero. The issue the DCEU had was that they neglected him. Audiences want Superman, and Gunn has been very popular with superhero films, so I think RSL is underestimating the success this Superman movie will have. And then on to Erin Mirza Tolu, who says, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor is in my opinion a great villain. I guess I'm sorry to all the haters who wanted a Lex Luthor to desire real estate instead of having an actual hate vendetta against Superman alongside having twisted beliefs about God and power. And I agree with this one. For me, Jesse was a breath of fresh air. He is a villain that really really sticks out to me and feels so unique and entertaining when watching him. Sure, he's not the typical Lex Luthor, but I like that. I feel if every take on these characters were the same, then I'd be very bored. So I like how this version of Lex was so unique and eccentric. This next opinion I agree with, but also disagree with. Nelson Fernando 19 says, best characters, best potential. The Dark Knight trilogy is proof. And it's a tricky one, and I feel saying this as such a definitive statement is my issue with it. Because yes, whilst I think you have more of a chance of success with the most popular characters, I don't necessarily think you have the best potential with them. You see, for characters such as Batman and Superman, you have a lot less freedom with them, as fans are so defensive and specific about how you tell their story. The general audience don't care too much as long as they look like the characters and the film is good. But with DC fans, there are some out there that gatekeep how the characters should be presented. For example, my three favourite versions of Batman are Ben Affleck, Christian Bale and Robert Pattinson, yet you will see DC fans criticise them for not being comic accurate in some way, meaning their potential with DC fans is lower as you really have to stay true to the comics to make them happy. Whereas let's say with the Guardians of the Galaxy, hardly anyone knew about them, even hardcore Marvel fans, so you really have a lot more freedom with them as the lore surrounding them is less rigid. And so whilst yes, I do believe you have a higher chance of success with the best characters as they are the most popular, I would argue that you actually have more potential with smaller characters as you are able to be more flexible with their storytelling. This next one will definitely cause some debate in the comments. Kevin Can 90 says, Batman should kill, not murder, but kill. The killing is already implied by his actions in the comics. Anybody who knows fighting would agree. Killing terrorists whilst under the threat of a dirty bomb or to save an innocent life is okay in my book. In fact, it would be immoral to not kill in some situations. Keaton's Batman and Bale's Batman killed. Nothing wrong with Batfleck doing it too. And I agree with the mentality, but not the wording. You see, it is still technically murder if Batman was to kill, unless it's manslaughter. But anyway, I do think it should be okay for Batman to kill in specific
specific circumstances. For me, he absolutely 100% cannot if it is just forgotten about by the next scene. The issue I have with Keaton's is that he never addresses it or acknowledges it. It's as if the director wasn't bothered about it and just wanted a spectacle. If Batman killing is a part of the story and character arc, then I definitely think it should be fine to happen. I also think sometimes Batman does things worse than killing. A lot of the time we see Batman beating criminals up so badly that they probably go into a coma or can't walk again. I'd argue that Batman doing that can be just as bad as killing. And like Kevin mentioned, if a terrorist has a bomb, I think Batman has every right to kill him, and I don't think anyone other than terrorists would have an issue with it. So I do agree with a lot of what Kevin has said. Movie Man 6208 says, Martian Manhunter's inclusion at the end of ZSJL was stupid. It was unnecessary, he watched Zod and Doomsday fight and kill thousands of people, and now when Steppenwolf comes and kills no one, he wants to fight. Give me a break. You know what? The more I think about that, the more I actually agree with it. I came up with my own theories as to how it would work, like Martian Manhunter not being Lennox the whole time, or he had PTSD, so every time he tried to help he would have a panic attack, but actually, none of that was shown. And looking back at it, it felt very random and like an afterthought, which it was as the scene was supposed to be Green Lantern instead, but when Snyder wasn't allowed to do that, he changed it for Martian Manhunter. But yeah, I agree with this opinion. DC Universe fanboy says, Tyler Hoechlin is a better Superman than Henry Cavill. Although it's not Cavill's fault, it's the scripts. Now I would have disagreed with this big time until I saw seasons 2 and 3 of Superman and Lois. That show really opened my eyes, and now Tyler Hoechlin is my favourite version of Superman, with Henry Cavill a close second, and Christopher Reeve being an extremely close third. But I do disagree with saying it's the script's fault for Henry Cavill not being as good, because I think it is Warner Brothers' fault for us not seeing Cavill's full story told. We were to have two more Justice League movies, plus hopefully another solo film at least, that would have really helped develop Cavill's Superman. Unfortunately, we didn't see that, so we can only judge him on what we have seen, and I loved his Superman, but I do feel we should have had more time with him in Batman v Superman and the Snyder Cut, and we should have heard him speak more too. What I love about Tyler Hoechlin's Superman is that we know more about what he is thinking and how he acts as a husband, a hero, a friend, and a father, and that being shown over three seasons gives him far more time on screen than Henry Cavill ever did. So I do mostly agree with DC Universe fanboy. And now let's talk about an unpopular opinion I disagree with because I have agreed with quite a few recently. Ivan says, My unpopular opinion is James Gunn is a bad director. Just fire him before he ruins DC. Now I disagree. I think he is a very good director, but his writing can let him down. Since he has started writing his own superhero projects, I feel the quality has gotten worse, but not because of the actual story he is writing. For me, it's the script and the dialogue that tends to feel way too amateur, and the freedom the actors have is way more than I think they should have. I feel he forces in too much humour and neglects the quality of dialogue used, and the actors improvise way too much and it creates a bit of a mess sometimes. I think he works better with someone who can pull the reins back a bit, who allows his creativity to shine but doesn't go overboard, meaning you get a good balance of humour but also with strong dialogue. But I do think he is a good director, he has created some very visually unique movies and he can always draw emotion. And his writing isn't terrible, I have never not liked one of the stories he has created but I just tend to get a bit sick of his humour, being so over the top all the time. Fortunately, running the DCU is very different to that. Very very tones from character to character and hiring writers for each story means people's fear of gun making everything comedic is invalid, so I disagree with Ivan. But thank you for the comment. Now Wally B's comment I strongly disagree with. He said, Shazam is easily the best DC movie. It's the only film besides the Suicide Squad with any emotional substance. Now, first of all, I think I can name 10 DC movies better than Shazam, but even if he was just referring to the DCEU, I think I can name six DCEU films better than Shazam. For me, I think Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, The Snyder Cut, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and potentially even Shazam 2. Oh, and I've just remembered, I'd 
I'd also include Blue Beetle in that, are all better than Shazam in my opinion. And to say it's the only movie besides The Suicide Squad with any emotional substance is genuinely absurd to me. I think the six, maybe seven films I named that I think are better than Shazam definitely have more emotional substance than Shazam or The Suicide Squad. For me, Shazam was a nice movie with a nice story and some sweet foster kids, but it was a nice film, nothing more than that. One of those movies you forget about after a couple of days. As for The Suicide Squad, whilst that film did have emotional substance to it, I feel the overuse of unfunny jokes just took away some of that emotion for me. So thank you for your comments, Wally B, and I respect your opinion, but I strongly disagree with it. And the final unpopular opinion we are going to talk about today is from the fanboy 2008, who says, The Flash is quite a good movie. Now, if you had shown me only the first half of the film, I would have really agreed with you, but the second half was an absolute mess and destroyed any real love I had for it. When they stayed in the main timeline, we had great character development for Barry, and I was really connecting to him, and it felt like a real Flash movie. But then once it went through the multiverse, it just went downhill. It was just a CGI mess with a nostalgic Batman and a Supergirl who they really neglected. I would also say that the CGI made it feel like a video game, so it felt fake, which meant I didn't care too much about what happened, and the constant time travel to the same battle and butchering of Zod and Feyora Al just made me not enjoy it anymore, which is such a shame because the trailers made the movie look great, but the second half of that film just ruined any chance of me enjoying it. So those are some of the most unpopular DC opinions I could find from you guys. Thank you so much to everyone who shared their opinion, and let me know your thoughts on all of these unpopular opinions in the comments below. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.